there may be no greater miracle than the creation of a child. But sometimes, Mother Nature gets it wrong. If a mother has Rh negative blood type and the father Rh positive, the fetus can have Rh positive blood too. If this comes into contact with the blood of the mother, it can generate an immune response, setting the stage for the devastation of Rh disease which can cause brain damage or death in subsequent babies. Until the middle of the last century, this led to countless broken miracles. What got me interested in this whole thing was actually meeting Alvin. I had no knowledge of RH disease, even though I had been a global health reporter for a few years. It was very obvious to me that there was a story here and, and an untold story. As soon as I went back to my computer and Googled RH disease, there's just really, in the developing world, there's just really nothing out there on this. So at that point, I knew that I wanted to write something about it. And my first interest was actually in writing about Dr. Sapersky. I thought it made a lot of sense to kind of funnel this issue through him. He's such an interesting and an amazing person. The entire story began in 1940. And within, within three decades, the disease could be erased. That's remarkable, because prior to 1940, no one really understood why babies were dying from the, the disease of blood disease, why the babies might, same mothers might have babies who died in utero. Mothers have repeated deaths of babies. It was not clear, but it was in 1940, and not before then, that two significant observations put together the idea that uh, the observation and the knowledge that RH disease was the cause of these problems. But the point was that in the 70s, a method of preventing RH disease by giving an injection to the mother was discovered, was implemented, and by the end of, uh, I said the 70s, but by the end of the 60s, by early 1970, it was worldwide in developed countries, in Canada, in the United States, where we've had the experience, the disease virtually was erased by making sure that every mother had an injection after delivery of these anti-RH antibodies, which would destroy those few red blood cells of the baby that were circulating in the mothers that caused all of the problems. I'd say um, in general, at least um, over the past several years, it's been largely a, a solved issue for the most part. Um, two things come to mind that sort of threaten that, that current status that we have. And one is that in other parts of the world, women may not have the uh, opportunity to have this phenomenon prevented in their own bodies, in their own pregnancies. So if an individual is new to Canada, for example, where they have not had an opportunity for prevention, mm -hmm. then they may be now living in Canada and have this RH positivity. And uh, every once in a while, I think the opportunity to uh, administer prevention is probably erroneously missed. And whether or not women are in fact declining uh, this opportunity for prevention. It's not an optional thing. I think people think it is, and it isn't. It's, it's uh, the pregnancy that you're, the risk of anemia in utero, babies are lost to it. Babies are lost to this, that's the facts. And if you don't expose yourself to the rogam now, if you feel, if you feel like that's intrusive, just imagine how intrusive it's going to feel when you're getting, when your baby inside your uterus is getting a blood transfusion in the pregnancy because you chose that option. And that's a real possibility. Um, and then your baby will also be induced early, sometimes very early. If they're not doing well, your baby will likely need uh, red blood cell transfusions after birth. They could also easily need an exchange transfusion, which is the replacement of all of their blood. They'll need, um, days and days, or in my case, weeks and weeks of phototherapy um, where they'll be in an incubator and you can't hold them. Uh, it's not an optional thing. It's, it's pretty serious. You're exposing them to a lot. 
I think the decision becomes a lot more obvious when you understand the consequences. What can happen to you, what can happen to your baby, what can happen to your future babies. Um, so, so the fact that people aren't very aware of RH disease anymore uh, is a problem because when it comes to deciding whether or not to get this injection for some mysterious issue that you've never heard of, that you don't understand, um, then it's, it becomes more natural to worry about the injection. So, so I do think it's key that, that women really understand this disease and, and sort of what the potential risks are involved. Very likely they've been told that they're getting an injection to prevent them from having children with RH disease. That has to be, any injection has to have that. But do they know what RH disease is like? Do those injecting it, the nurses, the doctors, really know what RH disease is like? And my answer is probably no, because they haven't seen it. So do those mothers really know that they um, are being prevented, that they're, they, they're receiving this medication to prevent them from having a baby who's, who develops brain damage? have a baby who dies in utero, have a baby who dies right at birth. No, I don't think they know that. That's really a message that should be shared. That's what these women have been spared by the injection. It's fantastic. And then you can get this treatment with anti dia to prevent the story or history what happened to me. And I believe that this way you actually paying your due to your child. It's very emotional, so. And I believe that it is responsibility of every woman to do that, especially in developed countries, because we do have everything available in order to prevent this from happening. Several years ago, many years after my work in, uh, in Winnipeg, when I realized that perhaps the disease has not gone. And for that reason, we carried out several studies, but the major one showed that over 100,000 babies die a year of this disease elsewhere in the world. And it, to me, it's a problem that can be solved because we know how to prevent the disease. It's a matter of getting it going. I traveled to Nigeria in the summer of 2017, and I met with women who've been affected by RH disease. One woman I met had, had 10 stillbirths or sort of late pregnancy miscarriages um, before she even knew about her RH blood type or what it was or about the possibility of RH disease. You know, the whole area knows my story uh -huh, because pregnancy is not something you cover. I've had nine miscarriages, nine, before I had Franklin. The first thing that came was like me, Florence, holding a live baby. He's just a child, but to me, he's like I have it all. I don't want any woman to go through what I went through. No, even my enemy, I don't pray for that. I would have been long be buried. Yes, because the pains then was much. I'm happy now because we are happy together. Being a mother, is the most wonderful thing any woman will experience. And over the course of that time, she had tried everything under the sun uh, that was available to her and paid you know, every penny that she earned. Um, so what I saw was that these women will do you know, anything it takes to have a healthy, live baby. Um, and the only thing that was missing was the knowledge that what was affecting them was RH disease and that the solution they needed was actually this one-time injection that they only had one window for, for taking. The Elden card is so interesting because along comes this card now. It's really just like the size of a credit card and it's sort of a plastic credit card looking type of thing and it just takes one sort of 
pinprick of blood. You can achieve the same diagnostic with this little device that you would if you had a full laboratory system. So it's so much more efficient and it's definitely more affordable. And you can really see how having access to something like this could really knock down one of the major hurdles in terms of getting RH disease uh, treated um, in a country like Nigeria. We've initiated in um, several countries model programs to, um, for the prevention of RH disease. One of them is in, the, uh, in Accra, Ghana, where um, a program of identifying RH negative pregnant women and providing them with the RH immune globulin for prevention is now underway. And this is a model program which we hope would be replicated in other countries. A similar program has been initiated in Chandigarh, India, and there the initiative is even broader in that uh, not only will the program occur within the hospitals in Chandigarh, but also in communities surrounded, and also with initiatives that could be um, India-wide um, where this problem can be prevented. Um, in Nigeria, it's very interesting, there is a program initiated by mothers, by women, who recognize that there is a problem. And they created a, uh, an initiative called Rhesus Solution Initiative. Very interesting, because what they s recognize is that RH disease is a problem, and they took the initiative, these women took the initiative to identify in a population of pregnant women which were RH, whom were RH negative, and those who should receive RH immune globulin, and with their own funds, they provided the money to provide the prevention of the disease. A remarkable undertaking. I then undertook steps to um, prevent this disease worldwide. And uh, eventually, the organization that resulted from uh, this initiative um, was created, and we called it the Consortium for Universal RH Disease Prevention, or the acronym is CURE. I've been very fortunate in establishing this program because my colleague, uh, Dr. Vino Botani, who's a professor at the Stanford University, is a great expert, an international expert, I should say, in the um, study of babies who are jaundiced. And he and I worked together on this uh, in terms of an international program that was developed for prevention of severe jaundice. Out of that occurred um, the, our collaboration in the preventing of RH disease, which is a major cause of jaundice. What really has to be done is education, education of the public, education of the health care providers, the doctors, the nurses, education of those making policy, government. Then you can begin to um, understand how a country can turn, its, uh, turn around and say, yes, we must prevent RH disease. When, when my children started to be born, uh, my, my wife was RH negative and I was RH positive and for the first baby, this was not available. But the second baby, we were able to enter a study and then all the subsequent babies were protected by the, the anti-D antibody that was this great, great innovation. And uh, so it, my professional life was impacted deeply that the children began to be born healthier and healthier. But my personal life was impacted as well. And, my, my babies are now big, big people, and then they're all fine people, and I'm, I really feel blessed by this advance in science and, and medical care. Well, I'm rather optimistic. I think with this initiative, it really should be gone in five to ten years from now. Let's say ten years from now, but then it should be solved worldwide. It has to, because the number of infants affected it's too large. Something I feel very strongly about, that uh, every 
woman who has the opportunity to prevent this problem, to, I guess, understand why it's being given, appreciate that they've had the opportunity to have this problem prevented, and hopefully want to um, help myself and others in Canada to create a voice uh, of RH women, RH negative uh, women worldwide um, to help with policy, access to care, and so on worldwide in order to prevent this potentially devastating and entirely preventable problem from occurring in the first place. Therefore, it should be prevented. And it should be prevented not to the exclusion of the other diseases, but should be prevented because it is there and it can be prevented. And I think the public should know that this type of, that support given to this is support to eradication of the disease, absolutely. I think it's all about fairness. And as Pope Francis said recently, our obligation as human beings is towards other human beings. And I think this really is an example of how we can take care of each other.